If I had my way, everything would be so nice. This world would be like Paris. No, it would be a paradise. No one would ever have to say, I'm going to get my wish someday. All one would have to do is say, this is my order, if you may. Welcome to another episode of The School Without Walls. I'm Anthony O'Hobbs, founding host of this educational program. The date is uh, February the 20th, 2013. We are pre-recorded. And uh, the purpose of this program is important for you to understand uh, uh, it is designed by an African-American to try to elevate the African-American community with special emphasis on the young males. So uh, that's the purpose. We, uh, we, we do things such as bring uh, male persons uh, that have been successful, such as my guest today, uh, who is uh, Mr. Kevin Sanders, one of the uh, system professors of English here at the university and uh, candidate for the PhD, and uh, perhaps in the next few months that might be a reality, eh? Yes. So in a few minutes I'm going to interview <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Sanders, but I want to congratulate a few people uh, that have given me support, such as Mr. Kim Williams, uh, and I, I appreciate your support. And also I want to recognize Reverend Johnny Smith, uh, Reverend Hank Wilkins and Reverend uh, Jesse Turner for being involved in mentoring, uh, which I've been advocating for over a decade now. I understand that uh, Reverend Wilkins has asked for 200 men to work with him with the Pine Bluff School system, and uh, Reverend Smith has several men working with him in the Dalloway School District, and I'm not sure exactly where Reverend Jesse Turner is. Uh, group will be, but he is mentoring. Now, now back to uh, my guests. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you, Dr. Hobbs. I understand you were born in Gould, Arkansas, right? Yes, good old Gould. Arkansas. Good old Gould, outskirts of Pine Bluff. And, uh, and you said when you were in school, you enjoyed biology, huh? At one point, I did enjoy biology. Uh -huh. So uh, what we want you to do is just tell us a little bit about your immediate family and then we will get into some other things. You have brothers and sisters, you like to name them, and your father's still living? Well, um, my uh, mom passed when I was three years old, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and my dad passed about five years ago. Mm. Uh, I have five brothers and five sisters, so naming them would take a long time, right, Dr. Five Hall, of them. So, okay. yes, and I'm the lowest. Eleven youngest. of you. Yes. That is a rather large family for your generation. Exactly. Now, yes. during my uh, parents' day, it was a common thing to have 10, 12, yes, 15, so, but okay. And they all live here in, this, in, the, in uh, the state? They are in the state, yes. Sir. I see. Okay, well. And they have uh, various uh, professions. Mm -hmm. um, I have a sister who have been working at, she's the RN at Jefferson. She's been working there for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a brother who, served in the armed forces, but now he works at the arsenal and mm -hmm. just a variety of professions in my family. Very good. Now let's talk about one of the courses you teach. I understand you teach, uh, you teach regular English, don't you? Yes, sir. But uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, African American literature since this is the African American uh, month. Yes. Sir. History month. Yes. Talk to me about uh, some of the things that you teach and how do you approach that? Uh, I approach African American literature through the aspect of race mm -hmm. uh, because that seems to be the essential feature of African American lit mm -hmm. and um, and I draw uh, different texts and focus on race as mm -hmm. the main focus uh, to show the resistance of blacks and the political aspect of African American literature. Mm -hmm. Well, could you be more specific? Uh, is there a book, a textbook written that you follow, or do you do you create your curriculum from various uh, sources? There is one uh, particular book I use, the Northern Anthology mm -hmm. of African American Literature, mm -hmm. and that has been the the main 
canon anthologized mm -hmm. for African American literature. Okay. And um, the, my favorite, uh, I guess I could go ahead and say my favorite uh, African American writer is Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Because she does the essential aspects of her characters and they are real. The reality, you can see them in her uh, writing. Okay. Could you give us an example of what you're talking about? Well, uh, in her 1970 book, The Bluest Eye. The Blue? The Bluest Eye. Okay. There's this nine year old uh, black girl mm -hmm. who wants to be white. Mm. Uh, and she uh, goes through different trials in order to get to this whiteness, in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is it's an identity issue mm -hmm. and she goes to different uh, people asking them can they make her white mm -hmm. uh, so there's this one particular character in the book uh, called Sophead Church uh, mm -hmm. this particular character uh, migrates from the Caribbean mm -hmm. he is uh, what you would call a racial hybrid or mixed character he's very light-skinned Mm -hmm. When he gets to Lorraine, Ohio, is where the uh, setting of the story takes place, uh, blacks in the community uh, look at him rather strangely. Mm -hmm. uh, he has curly hair okay. and all of that, but he stays with this older woman in the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So he wants, so when he gets... Is this an adult? This is an adult, oh, yeah, who mm -hmm. migrates. But okay. the little black girl goes to him and she asks him, can you give me blue eyes? Mm. And the story goes on, but she never gets her blue eyes. Mm -hmm. She's kind of a little, uh, mentally unstable for wanting blue eyes. And mm -hmm. I think that is the reality, and it's still reality in the black community today, mm -hmm. of people wanting to run away from their blackness, in a sense, and run to this white. I want to be white. Mm -hmm. And that's what my dissertation deals with. Uh, when I first started my dissertation, I asked the question, why do black people want to be white? white? Why yeah. do they act white? I've mm -hmm. been often called Oh, you act white, mm -hmm. and okay. that has been an issue with me. Okay, now we have about a, <clears throat> less than a minute to finish this first segment. Let us continue this on the other side of this break by dealing with why. Why is it uh, that you think uh, as a, many African Americans have a desire to be white, mm -hmm. which is impossible? Yes. We'll be back in just a few minutes. It's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk. Hey, my name's Katie and I'm in the ninth grade. I'm an A average student and I'm an athlete working towards a scholarship. And everybody tells me how much potential I have. But I just wish someone would tell me where my next meal is coming from. Katie, how'd I do? Do you have to be so serious? Well, I mean, I did like a crazy dance in a movie if you want me to like, you know, do a little, no. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Hey, listen up. We have a challenge. A big challenge. Many African Americans fighting diseases like leukemia, lymphoma, and sickle cell anemia can't find you. Can't find marrow donors. We need more African Americans to step up. Step up. You could be the one to save a life. You can be the match. Take the first step at be the match.org. Step your game up. 
Uh, welcome uh, uh, to this uh, program. Those of you who just joined us, I'm Anthony, Anthony O. Hobbs, host, and I'm interviewing uh, my guest and co-worker, Mr. Kevin Sanders. Just before the break, we were talking about uh, many African Americans rejecting their race and having a desire to be white, as you were telling the story about the young girl who desired the blue eyes. Why do you think that is the case? Uh, there is something called internalized uh, racism. Mm -hmm. This aspect of stemming from slavery internalized and racism, racism okay. uh, where it's, it's, it's built in into the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, a, a concept that is, I, I'm dealing with in my dissertation mm -hmm. of, of why this, this, this problem is going on, mm -hmm. so uh, internalized racism. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what have you concluded at this point? What's causing them to, uh, you know, internalized racism, okay, but what is it that's causing them to want to be white? It's, it's the privilege of, of, of and, and the aspect I was trying to search, what is this whiteness? Everyone is wanting to, some people want, some blacks want to run to. Uh, I would say money mm -hmm. is, is the main culprit and mm -hmm. more privileges. Yeah, I it, think that's the key word I was waiting to hear is privilege. Uh, it, it's, it's a psychological thing that caused them to feel that if I can achieve the, that impossible feat, mm -hmm. then I will be able to have those privileges. Mm -hmm. Which is not realistic, it's, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> but that is that is something. It's uh, it's it's shown in many different ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, some is in the way they, they dress. Yeah, yes. You know, I remember especially before the civil rights struggle. I was a young man, and I can remember when uh, so many African American women, seemingly for some reason, the women. Uh, bought into this more so than black male, mm -hmm. like, the, can still like, see the, today. like the straightening of mm -hmm. the hair, yes. and uh, it used to be that uh, there was a hot comb. You don't know anything about the straightening comb, do you? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, they, and they would put it in fire. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was before the electric comb, mm -hmm. and you just can imagine this young girl sitting there, and I've seen this happen. They're frowning, and the mother's pulling this hot comb through their hair and mm -hmm. burning the top of the ear, mm -hmm. and she's she's complaining. Mama, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. I want to make you pretty. Mm -hmm. So she must have said, I am an ugly person. Mm -hmm. If my mother's going to burn my ear and do all this and scald my head, it ought to make me beautiful. Mm -hmm. But she was indirectly trying to make her hair look like the white lady's hair, white woman's hair, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh -huh. and, and today, it's easier than a straightening comb. You can go out and they can buy hair, as you can <laughs> see around the community, of, of, of long hair. That mm -hmm. issue is still going on. It's still going on. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate, in my opinion, because uh, the woman has such a powerful influence on the child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's hard to break the cycle if mm -hmm. the woman is saying that I'm more beautiful if I'm looking like somebody else. Mm -hmm. exactly. Whereas the male, most African American males, have their natural hair yeah, exactly. and uh, so forth and so on. Don't go into the bleaching so much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's a phenomenon that uh, I guess uh, I call it, uh, I had a term for that, it's called the damages of slavery. Oh, yeah, exactly. Damaged. Mm -hmm. Because uh, before the civil rights movement, uh, <laughs> I'd lived through so much the lighter ones of us had more privileges within our race and mm -hmm. the darker ones mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that the civil rights struggle changed to a great degree. Mm -hmm. And James Brown, mm -hmm. with Black and Proud, mm -hmm. played a great role it, in it, that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the novel, The Blue Eyes, was written in 1970. So mm -hmm. Morrison is working on the cultural and historical aspects mm -hmm. of black. That's his, the, this, this author? The, yeah, The Blue Eyes, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Tony Morrison. It was mm -hmm. written in 1970. So I see. So it's mm -hmm. all intertwined. And, and by the way, since I mentioned Black and I'm Proud, uh, the uh, artist James Brown did not coin that. He made it popular. It was Stokely Cormichael. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Stokely? I have, yes. He was the one mm -hmm. who started We're Black and We're Proud. Mm -hmm. And it played a great role on, on, in a positive way mm -hmm. with the African American. Mm -hmm. Now back to your, I see you have something there. What is that? Yeah, there are a couple of poems I brought and mm -hmm. I want to read just mm -hmm. for commemoration of black mm -hmm. um, 
History Month. Mm -hmm. uh, one is by you, Dr. Hobbs, oh, and I way. want to read it first okay. Okay, and ahead. share it with the audience as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, the title is A Panoramic Prospective of Project Lead High Expectations mm -hmm. by Dr. Anthony Hobbs. As we look back through time, we see an organization called LINX going into a conference to find ways to rid our society of some of its problems that actually stink. Mm -hmm. They concluded that there were so many problems, social problems facing our nation, they formed a think tank. Mm -hmm. They brainstorm again and again, thus defining the most urgent problem, which is the need for our, of our youth to improve their behavior. Yes, they were quite frank. Mm -hmm. We as women and mothers must act now to keep this boat of civilization a floatless its sake. Mm -hmm. So they called upon people home and abroad of every rank to work in concert to establish a knowledge bank. Mm -hmm. They ordered and commanded all to work without, without deliberation, even if along the way some should faint. Mm -hmm. Thanks to God, on this day, we will have completed the first stage of the project with all sane and in sync. Mm -hmm. Now, young people, it is up to you to multiply this knowledge rather than to allow it to shrink. Mm -hmm. You should have been given several skills, but still you must do more than remember. You have got to think. Mm -hmm. Let's take module one. Values, self-image, and self-esteem. If you don't remember that drug abuse has called potential genius to become but more mere cranks. Module four, preventing early sexual involvement, unintended pregnancy, and sexual transmitted diseases. Not to adhere to this module is like wading in the water of a swift running river rather than fishing from the bank. Mm. Module five, last but not least, high expectations, academic excellence, and vocational or career planning. Let's say the other four modules you succeeded in doing, and the fifth you failed, and just call it jinx. Mm. I assure you, your lives will never be what they could have been, just unhappy clanks. Now, young people, we have given you our very best to be quite quaint, hoping that you understand clearly the picture we have tried to paint. Hmm. Thank you for reading that. We got one minute, so one you might more. make a comment on that, and we're going to go for a break. What, uh, what, what caused you to happen to bring that one in? I thought that there, it, it, it's a direction, direction for our youth, mm -hmm. uh, and the issues that face uh, the black problem in our community. You listed drug abuse, sexual involvement, unattended pregnancy, unwed marriage. All of these play a part in, in seceding. Mm -hmm. And um, the more and most important I would think is to think. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and our students even today don't do a great deal of, of thinking. That is so and true. And they so true. want to superficially uh, talk about things, whereas you have to be uh, more in-depth. You use your critical thinking skills, mm -hmm. and I'm big on critical thinking skills. Well, let us stop on that, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? 
Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the techs, and together we can stop the wrecks. Hi, my name is Danny Andre Brill II, a senior here majoring in industrial technology, management, and applied engineering. I thought that I would be looking for a job at this point, but thanks to my mentor, Dr. Charles Colin at Career Services, I was able to obtain a position as an industrial engineer upon graduation. Danny worked hard in class from the beginning, obtaining three internships while on campus. UAPB can help prepare students like Danny for those same opportunities. UAPB prepared me. Uh, welcome to another episode of The School Without Walls. This is the final section here with uh, uh, Mr. Kevin Sanders, uh, one of the uh, professors here at the university. Uh, just before the break, we were dis we, you read a poem that I, I certainly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Now you have another one, so let's hear it. Okay, this one is written by Mari Evans. She was born in uh, Toledo, Ohio, and she's mm -hmm. written a great deal of works. Mm -hmm. uh, who can be born black? Mm -hmm. Who can be born black and not seeing the wonder of it, the joy, the challenge, mm -hmm. and to come together in a coming togetherness? Vibrating with the fires of pure knowing, reeling with power, ringing with the sound above, sound above sound to explode in the majesty of our oneness, our coming together in a coming togetherness. Who can be born black and not exult? Okay. Uh, and and uh, what does that poem say in other words to you? Uh, what is the author thinking, I guess we should say? There should be a one. We all are one, mm -hmm. and the power of one mm -hmm. makes us better. Not, you should not want to be born black. Mm -hmm. Should not want to, to be, be born, born right, yeah. black, right. We, we need to accept what we are. Yeah. We all are God's children. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. It's, it is very unfortunate too that we have still to this day we have people that are not pleased with their own skin, <laughs> what they are. That's and it affects what you will become. Mm, exactly. I'll tell you what I like to do. We have about six more minutes, do we, uh, Randy? Uh, I'm going to recite a poem and explain to the, country, uh, the audience uh, why I wrote this poem. Uh, see, I've been dealing with this for decades. I, uh, I came up in a community. I lived in an area of Arkansas where a large percentage of the people were mulattoes. Mm -hmm. Large percentage. And I, I came from that from that background. I heard things and I saw things and I was very glad that I was able to improve my understanding. I saw beauty in a very black woman, dark skinned woman, and I'm gonna call this woman Jessica, I think. I just call her Jessica, you know, for lack of a better term. <laughs> I said, you are my ebony beauty. You give so much pleasure to my senses. When I come face to face with you, I'm as a loosened mass that slides your way. I have no defenses. If all the girls were blessed as you, my ebony beauty fair, there would be no need for the businesses, for the care of the skin, the nails, and the hair. Out of all the women King Solomon had in line, I'm sure he would have chosen you, number one, lovely maiden sublime. That was, I was motivated by the beauty of this woman. Mm -hmm. And I started making changes where I realized that beauty was not just on one race. Mm -hmm. All races have beauty. Mm -hmm. And my mother taught me that the real beauty is not seen. Exactly. It's within the individuals. Mm -hmm. And that helped me a lot. In, in near the conclusion, I want to mention to the audience that Dr. Carter Woodson uh, in the early 30s started uh, history, National History Week and now it has become a, a history month. So I plan to do whatever I can to continue it, and I'm encouraging you to realize that history is important for every ethnic group. And uh, I'm encouraging the pastors especially to make this a part of your educational curriculum in your churches, patterning after the Jew. The Jew doesn't have any problem, the Jewish people, I shouldn't say Jew, the Jewish people don't have any problem with the public school system not stressing the Jewish history mm -hmm. because they feel it's their responsibility to teach it themselves. In the synagogues, they, by the time they're 16 years old, they pretty well know who they are and they can survive anywhere. So I'm hoping that we will take that pattern and start teaching the history in our, in our, in our churches. And I will continue on this program with uh, 
bits, uh, bits and pieces of uh, African American history. Okay, we have about uh, three or four minutes. Uh, anything else you would like to say about your work here at the university? Well, I've been here 18 and a half years, mm -hmm. and it's been uh, quite enjoyable quite for enjoyable. me mm -hmm. and the students and, and all of that, and I really am working here. And this was your first job? Uh, very first job, yes. Very first job. <laughs> so you, know, you don't have any public school experience, right? N only maybe uh, substituting, but no mm -hmm. real uh, high school experience. Okay. Well, I have a, we have a few more minutes, and I want to mention some dates here. Okay. Um, the year 2013 marks two important anniversaries in the history of the African American in the, in the United States. On January 1, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation set the United States on the path of ending slavery. Uh, a wartime measure issued by President Abraham Lincoln, the proclamation freed relatively few slaves, but it, it uh, fueled the fire to the uh, enslavement to the enslave to strike for their own freedom. Uh, and I think that's essential for us to understand now as a people, uh, we've come a long way in my lifetime, but we still have a lot to do, and so much of it has to do with self-determination mm -hmm. rather than waiting on somebody else mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, we want to realize that I believe that every person on earth is put here to help somebody. And you can't help somebody if you don't put yourself in a position to exactly. do so, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. For example, a person, Jessica, can be too poor to prosper. Mm -hmm. And uh, poverty uh, is, is caused by people, mm -hmm. you see. Exactly. So we, we, have to, we have to watch things like that. And uh, as the time runs down, Brenda, we have, what, about two minutes now? One minute. And we're going to close out by saying the next person that you see will be one of my students, uh, Miss Jessica uh, Armstrong, I believe that's her name. Is that right? Thank you again for being Thank with you. us. Okay. Thank you.